Good morning, everybody. Uh, I wanted to go over today not knives, not fire steels, but talk about a uh, sheath maker that I've talked about in the past uh, when he when I did the review on the LT rate uh, Genesis. But I wanted to give a little bit more attention to his work and just show you the variety that he's done uh, over a pretty short period of time, actually. Um, so, first we're going to get rid of some fire steels here. So, I like danglers. Um, removable danglers are awesome. Um, so, we're going to go over his stuff one by one. So, first up is the Adventure Sworn Mountaineer in the first sheath I've ever gotten from Aaron over at One Tree Leather. It's a very nicely done sheath. This is back when he, he started making sheaths for his knives and I kind of harassed him for a while to start making sheaths for mine. Um, the retention is awesome, so it seats in here right at the bottom. That's as deep as it goes on this one. Tension is absolutely great. It did move a bit, but it's not coming out. So if we look at this, a little bit more detail. Um, stitching is awesome. This belt loop is actually, I think, a little off center, but that's fine. I carried on a dangler. Um, this I added. This this ring I added because originally, originally it wasn't a dangler. I don't think he was making danglers originally. Um, and then it has some. Um, brown stitching and it's just a sim very simple brown sheath. I gave him really no direction for this one. I just said I want a sheath and it wasn't for the Mountaineer. I mean yeah it wasn't for the Mountaineer. It was for my Explorer but the Mountaineer as you can see just fit the look of it just fits so much better than uh, my Explorer which is uh, white linen uh, no uh, ivory micarta. Um, so, but this is probably, this is one of his very, very early pieces that he sent. This dangler, however, was a dangler that, I don't remember how I got this dangler, um, but this was a removable dangler that he made that would go on his belt, on his belt, on my belt. Snap there, go around the ring and snap on. And I love removable danglers because, like I said, I don't have to take off my, my belt to get them off, so that's awesome. Uh, he has made some changes since to a different setup, which we'll get to on the last one, just the, the way this the way this clasps. Um, noticed on another sheet that he gave me, if you were, weren't paying attention and you pushed your hand down along your sheath, you could catch this and pop or pop one or both. So, um, he fixed that by uh, changing the setup a little bit. So that was his first piece that he sent me. This was very early on. And he was, you know, he's using excellent leather. Really, really stiff material. I haven't tried wet forming any of his stuff because I don't see a need to. Um, just overall, very, very well finished. Um, I have never applied any open-offs or any sort of treatments to any of the sheaths that he's given me. Um, I've always just felt like they're they're solid, uh, that they don't need anything else. So that one off to the side. The next one up, definitely more creative from him. Uh, take our Genesis out. Um, dark brown with red stitching, just because I have the maroon or the double red micarta. And then he, he was playing around with the idea of putting a ferro rod loop on the dangler. And this was the dangler that I said because of this long tab here. You could kind of accidentally catch and pop one or both off. But the best thing about that was that and I, if both popped off, I could still walk for a little while before this actually really slips. And it still has a lot of tension on it because it just fits through that loop, which is great. It's a nice tight fit. Um, and then this one wasn't, um, this one didn't have a snap here because of how this is set up. Uh, but again, no issues 
with this dangler. So really, you have to thread this through your belt, but that's not bad. Um, this fire steel loop uh, was a little loose for me anyway. Um, I didn't like that if I took off the knife and I held it this way, that the fire steel could fall out. Um, so he was just playing around with that in the beginning. That's why he provided a second one down here, which would have to take a shorter fire, fire steel because something this long actually fits kind of well, so I would have to, you know, have a half inch shorter because of the hump. Um, and then the other way around, you know, that's the problem you'd run into. So if you had, this is a four or four and a half inch fire steel, if you had a shorter one, it'd be perfectly fine. And then for up here, it fits well, but I've had, and it's not going to do it here, but it does end up loosening up on you and just sliding around a little bit more than I would care for. Um, I thought this would interfere with my belt originally, but the belt slides right through the back and actually out of the way. So, and that actually might provide a little bit more tension on that loop just to help hold it in place. But overall, excellent sheath, absolutely amazing stitching. This looks on point. Uh, it's taking on the shape of the Genesis, um, double stitching all the way, great edges, everything's just well burnished, and finish is absolutely impeccable. All the lines that he's done on this dangler are top notch, um, you know, they don't really need to be there. Another thing that I love is that he cuts out this little portion right here because this dangler is going to move and swing. And if it was squared off, it was just going to deform anyway, so you might as well have that just for that motion all around. It, it's definitely going to help extend the life of the dangler and you know give it more durability. Um, but with talking with Aaron all the time, he's never happy with anything he really produces. He strives for perfection and just keeps trying and trying and trying, so this was the third sheath by him that I commissioned him to do uh, to match my Adventure Sworn Classic in green and black micarta. So he did nice green stitching on black leather with copper hardware, which looks absolutely phenomenal. And the copper hardware actually matches the, there's natural liners in here that it matches really, really well. So I'll flip this over, and you can see that I think the stitching is even more perfect on this one. Uh, two holes for a piece of cordage to maybe wrap around my leg so it doesn't flop as much. Uh, a little bit more of a design down here. Um, the dangler on this one, where's my other one, is a little bit thinner, but now the snaps pull up to release this way. There's really no way you can accidentally hit this. Um, and there's a little bit less of a tab there, so it's a little bit more, uh, I don't want to say idiot proof, but idiot proof. Um, it's not going to accidentally come undone. But really, really solid sheaths. Um, he uses the thickest leather available and just, you know, goes above and beyond what he really needs to do as a leather maker. Um, you know, I have no issues with any of these. These are all very, very excellent sheaths. Um, I love them to death. That's why I'm doing a video on them. Uh, right now, currently, his books are closed. Uh, I don't know when they'll reopen. He's, uh, he's pretty busy. He's got a lot, a lot of work to do. Um, but his pricing, so for so for everyone in the United States, he is out of uh, Canada, over near Vancouver or in Vancouver. I don't know, you know, I don't know that much about Canada, but over near Vancouver, um, and his pricing is eighty to one hundred U.S. dollars, depending on options and features that you choose. Um, so I would assume, like most leather makers, that 
if you wanted a ferro rod loop, it'd be more expensive. If you wanted a dangler, it would be more expensive. If you just wanted a basic sheath like this without a ferro rod loop, that would probably be your $80. Uh, if you wanted a dangler and a ferro rod, and a ferro rod loop, um, that would probably be closer to your $100 range. Um, I'm not 100% certain on that. Uh, but overall, phenomenal sheaths, great maker, great guy. Um, I gotta say that it, the amount of time that it takes him to make a sheath is pretty good. Uh, it's better than a lot of the guys out there. Um, I've seen anywhere from two months to a month. Uh, Aaron usually, uh, when his when his books are open, and depending on you know what his his wait times are, uh, it was uh, I think the longest I've seen him post is four weeks, uh, which is which is great. And if you're in the beginning of that that order period, that when he opens up his books, it'll be even faster. Uh, it'll be you know he knocks out I think a couple every weekend. Uh, and what's also great about him is he has great communication. He'll send you photos. He'll go through and um, and give you give you updates about it. And he won't take on work unless if he can actually give it give you back your product in a reasonable time. Um, what's also great about Aaron is so there's going to be a lot of people in the United States that are hesitant about sending their knives out to Aaron to get anything done. But, but I have to tell you that this knife which fits perfectly. And this knife, which also fits perfectly. And this knife, I'm still breaking in this sheath, sits a bit deep if I push it all the way in. But if I pull it out just a bit, you know, pretty much fits perfectly. And I've sent none of these knives to him. Um, he owns a bunch of, he either owns or owned um, these knives and has templates already made. He's also very good at eyeing sheaths, so he can definitely knock out a sheath from you from possibly a photo. He might ask you for some dimensions, but he can totally knock out a sheath without actually having the knife, which is great because sometimes you don't want to ship that knife. Um, the only times that I could see him possibly wanting the knife is a uh, different, you know, a more a crazier design. Um, my William Collins Junior Woodsman would probably need, I would probably want to send that to him so he can nail it. Or if you want him to have uh, creative freedom over the design, he might want to have the knife just to try to match a sheath for the knife better. Um, but anyway, that is Aaron over at One Tree Leather. Uh, he is a phenomenal maker, as I've said before. He will take care of you. You guys should definitely go over and check him out. He's on Instagram. He's just starting a website, and I don't think he's on Facebook, but I'll I'll ask him. Uh, I'll put any sort of links I have for him down in the contacts down down in the description below. I want to thank you for watching this video, and please like, comment, share. If you want to see more videos like this and other outdoor-related videos, please subscribe. Thank you.